Our project is photocatalytic oxidation, or PCO, of volatile organic compounds, improvements on system efficiency through modifications of the reactor and the catalyst. I'm Skip Sparks. To my right is Kyle Persing, Dennis Kahn, and our group leader, Molly Gagan. Our faculty advisors are Dr. Chen and Dr. Fisher Drellis. Our industry advisor, as well as sponsor for our project, is Mr. Samuel Spear from Catalytic Technologies, and our project coordinator is Professor Victor Marcus. All right, here's a brief overview of what you're going to hear in today's presentation. We will start by giving some background information as well as the motivation for our project, go into the goals for the project as well as the system design, a detailed description of the PCO process, our data and results for the project, as well as how the project was managed. All right, ethylene gas is a naturally occurring plant hormone that promotes the premature ripening of fruits and vegetables. So if you can remove the ethylene gas from the air around where these, this produce is stored, you can prolong the shelf life of these fruits. Our project sponsor, Catalyst Technologies, makes air purifiers that are installed where fresh produce is stored that use the PCO process with titanium dioxide as the catalyst that reacts with the volatile organic compound or the, this process works by the UV light re, uh, and activates the, the titanium dioxide catalyst, which reacts with the volatile organic compound, in our case, ethylene gas, and forms carbon dioxide and water. Now here's Kyle with our project goals. So there are two main goals for our project. The first goal is to alter the catalyst. We use the standard titanium dioxide catalyst. We also use titanium dioxide doped with 3% platinum, and we use a titanium dioxide AD, which contains a small percentage of silica oxide. The next goal was to alter the reactor. We did this by lining the inside of the reactor with a gore diffused refractive material, which actually reflects 99% of UV light compared to the steel walls of the reactor, which actually absorb 60% of the UV light. These modifications were made to increase the destruction of the ethylene gas, and we also had to determine the rates, the rates of destruction of the ethylene gas to investigate which methods granted further work. So here's the design of our system. As you can see, traveling down the center of the reactor, <coughs> the accordion screens, which are uniformly coated with the catalyst. The next important piece of equipment would be the UV light, which travels the length of the reactor. We also use a circulating pump to ensure uniform concentration throughout the entire experiment. And we also had a cooling system in place around the outside of the reactor to model more real world conditions because fresh produce is always stored at a lower temperature. We also had a thermocouple so we could monitor the temperature throughout the experiment. So there was some prep work involved prior to our experiment. We had to first pressure test the system. We filled it with air and sprayed it with soapy water. And if there were any bubbles formed, we knew that there was a leak. We also had to clean the screens. We soaked them in a strong base and then coated them with the catalyst. We dipped them in the catalyst and let them dry and repeated three mm -hmm. times to ensure that there was uniform, uniform catalyst coating. We then had to generate a calibration curve. We did this by using known concentrations of ethylene and testing them with the GC. We then created the rate <coughs> equation so we could relate the ethylene concentration to the data generated by the GC. And as you can see, we generated a linear calibration curve prior to the run. We then used this calibration curve to run a control. The control for our project was the standard titanium dioxide catalyst, which we compared all of our modifications to. And here's Dennis with further work on the chemistry. The titanium dioxide catalyst is a semiconductor. This means when exposed to UV light, the energy from the photon of the light will excite the electron and it will removed from the, the titanium surface. It will leave behind a positively charged hole. This electron and hole will then undergo a series of reactions with the oxygen and water in the air to create a hydrogen peroxide molecule. Under further exposure to the UV light, the hydrogen peroxide molecule will split into two hydroxyl radicals, which will then promote the overall oxy oxidation reaction of ethylene. The ethylene will be converted into CO2 and water. So we determined that the, that the rate was first pseudo first order. Using the GC data and then taking the natural log of this and plotting it, we, did, we showed the linear line. The linear line is how we determined that it was pseudo first order. The slope of the linear line is the pseudo rate constant. When the pseudo rate constant is found, it can then be converted to another rate constant to make the results more ca comparable. This takes into account the mass of the catalyst and the volume of the reactor system. And here are where our results. Comparing the platinum doped titanium to the undoped, we saw a slight increase in efficiency. However, we were not able to obtain the maximum concentration of platinum, or the optimum concentration of platinum due to budget and time restraints. We then also tested the AD gore line material compared to the TiO2 with AD without the gore line. We saw a very slight increase in efficiency here. 
However, due to excess handling of the catalyst and the, the catalyst screens and the core material, we believe that some catalyst was lost in the process. So we have no way of knowing how much was lost and calculate, uh, calculate a rate constant to be more accurate. So this number should be a little bit higher. So, and here's my more on the project management. This is the schedule that was followed throughout the length of our project. All activities were completed in a timely manner, allowing us to complete the project as a whole on time. Our project team was allotted $1,450 from the School of Engineering. Of that $1,450, our group has $161.22 remaining. This proves that our project was successfully completed under budget and we will be returning the $161.22 back to the School of Engineering. Our project sponsor, Mr. Samuel Spear from Catalyst Technologies, donated our group $2,150 worth of equipment and materials to make this project possible. The Department of Chemistry allowed us the use of the gas chromatograph for ethylene analysis, which is valued at $800. And finally, the Department of Chemical Engineering donated our group $400 worth of materials. There were a few challenges encountered throughout this project. First, in the beginning stages of the reactor design, there were many leaks. These leaks were hard to identify. After many pressure tests, the major leak was identified within the circulating pump. A new circulating pump was purchased and installed within the reactor system. This eliminated leaks and allowed us to obtain more accurate data. Next, after preliminary runs on the GC, it was evident that the column needed to be replaced. The column was producing peaks that were on top of each other. Research was performed and a new column was identified. This column was purchased, installed, and used, which allowed us to obtain better data and improved resolution. And finally, there were a few procurement issues throughout the project. Um, alternate items had to be identified. These items were purchased, and in the end, all items were successfully acquired, allowing us to complete the project on time. And now Skip will recommend some future recommendations. Uh, a few recommendations for future work are to design a more user-friendly system that would minimize leaks and increase the ease of installation of the highly reflective core material. Um, also to test smaller concentrations of ethylene to mimic more real-world conditions. And to test various amounts of the platinum dopant to find the optimal, um, the optimal concentration um, for increased efficiency. Alright, we successfully tested all of the modifications we plan to. Um, the, both the platinum dopant and the highly reflective material showed increased reaction kinetics and we believe that they deserve further study. Um, all activities were completed on time and the whole project was completed under budget. Now Molly would like to say a few words. We, we as a group would like to take the time to give a special thanks to everyone that made this project possible. First off, Widener University School of Engineering, Department of Chemical Engineering, and Department of Chemistry, Mr. Samuel Spear from Catalyst Technologies, Mr. Andy Nadolsky from the Department of Chemistry, Mr. Marty Chemical Engineering, Mr. Marty Schultz from the Department of Chemistry, and finally our project advisors, Dr. Chen and Dr. Fisher Drows. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I would now like to open the floor to any questions. Do we have any questions for this? What should you consider as the highest achievement if you're in your project? Uh, I would consider the evidence that platinum dopant did increase some kinetic, some effect on the kinetics of the reaction. So now we have uh, a little bit of proof to go further in the study to evaluate the optimal concentration. Any other questions? Yes, sir. You mentioned uh, the, one of the cows you were using um, had some degradation. You thought there were some handling issues possibly for it. Do you identify where that might have happened and how you can improve that later? Uh, yes, well, when the gore material and the screens were installed, they had to be installed at the same time, like slid into the reactor system. And it was a tight fit, and it required a lot of force to get it in there, and we believe some catalyst was knocked off the screen during this process. So is there any way to improve that in the future? Well, one way would be to decrease the size of the screens a small fraction so that they would slide in easier. And another way would be to come up with a whole new reactor design. You are comparing the results that you obtained with the previous work that was done in the past by other senior projects? Uh, yes, we, would, we did, but they had a different volume of the system, so their results would be slightly different because they had leaks in their system, so they tried to uh, increase the volume to minimize the leaks. So.
so they weren't really comparable. Yes, sir? Why did you screen the, some, of the, some of the technology that had a higher surface area? This is the method that our sponsor uses in the air purifiers that he installed, that he sells. We have time for one more question. There's one. Yes, sir? Uh, did you discern any issues with uh, humidity uh, in your process? No, we didn't look into that. It, it was run in the same environment every time, so we don't think there would be any issues. It should be constant. Thank you very much.